Hey everyone, welcome to Trail Talk. We took it on the road today and we are here at the Stevens County Historical Museum in, we're still in Duncan, and we have Copa Williams with us. She's the executive director here at the Historical Museum. And uh, so Copa has been a guest on Trail Talk before. Mm -hmm. You came on and talked about William Duncan and kind of how Duncan ended up being the city that it became, I guess. She had so much great information to share. But today we came over here because Cobra, you have a, a temporary exhibit here. Yes. It's only gonna be here for how much longer? Uh, the rest of this week and the first part of next week. Okay, so just a short time. So we wanted to be sure that you got a chance to uh, see and hear what it's all about and get yourself over here before it's gone. So, uh, and my goodness, there have been so many folks here visiting and coming by to see all this great collection. So, Koba, um, I guess, first of all, tell us what is this? Uh, it's called Awakening the Mind. Yes. A mobile World War I museum. museum yes. Okay, so kind of tell us a little bit the background of this. I, you were just kind of telling me that yeah. story. Well, Keith Holly. Uh, founded this museum and collected all the artifacts, uh, did all the posters, collected the, the visuals that you see. The, there's two TVs that also tell the story of World War I. And um, he just did a wonderful job mm -hmm. collecting this museum. The World War I Museum travels all over the United States. Okay. And so- uh, And because it's, it was, it's like the 100th anniversary. So this started well, it's tour like in 2018? 19, yes. Oh, in 19. Well, I think he actually started the tour like five years ago. We started collecting about five years okay. ago. Okay, okay. And uh, I wish he was here today. He's not. He had a fundraiser to attend. And mm -hmm. anybody in the museum world knows that you got to right. go with those right. fundraisers. And people are raising money for you. You attend. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, so it's me today. But he's told some wonderful stories about the artifacts that he's collected. Uh, the first one he collected was the little trench shovel and uh, he was working with a man who had Alzheimer's uh -huh. and the man reminded him that there was the upcoming anniversary of 100 years since World War I was ended, ended. Uh -huh. and so um, he thought to himself I need because he knew that with sometimes with people with those kind of mental disabilities uh, react to different stimulus uh, sound smell right. all that kind of stuff so he found a World War I trench shovel, uh -huh. put it in this man's hands, and the man immediately started crying, and then he just opened up, started to tell all of these wonderful stories of his experience in World War I. And so, so this man must have been, he was old when he met Really? Him. Yeah. I mean, that, that was, was a long time. It was a long time ago. And then he started oh, collecting. Okay. okay. Then he started collecting other things. And I wish Keith was here because he could tell you those dates. And so I'm this sure. was several years prior to the anniversary. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I was like, no, it was about. Wow, five. that man had to have been like over no. hundred and thirty yeah, no. years old. It was. It was a lot prior to even the collection. <laughs> right. You know, right. Uh, he's been seriously collecting for the museum for five years. Okay. This was before that. Before that, where yeah. he was, I guess, kind of inspired. Yes. To start. Art. Yes, such and a I, great collection. I hope I have that story right, and Keith will tell me if I don't. But uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I want to say hi to a friend of ours named Stefan. Stefan lives in Pennsylvania, and he's watching with wonderful. us today. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so he's collected all of these items and um, put together a muse a mobile museum. So that means he kind of parks it in various museums across the country. Or a lot of uh, senior living facilities ah. and veterans facilities as okay. well. Okay, yeah, so. that would be yes. Yeah. Uh, really uh, special, have a lot of special meaning. Yes. Because even though none of the veterans from World War I are, would still be living, they're, some of their children and yes. for sure their grandchildren, yes. Yes. you know, would still be, and any veteran is going to be so honored to be in the presence right. of things that the people who came before them. Right. So, and of course, World War One was a different kind of war than had ever been fought, mm -hmm. and uh, and so there's a lot of the artifacts are just fascinating as to their purpose of what they did. Um, 
I don't know if we could swing the camera to oh, yeah. these stakes right yeah, here. Yeah, we sure can. We're going to move here. You guys hang on. Don't get motion sick with us. I'll just pull this around. I'll let Kova. When we first went over uh, to France and there and for World War One, we were taking like T posts with loops on the top, and they would pound those into the ground. Well, what happens when you hit steel? They steal. Loud it noise. makes a lot of noise. And the Germans would know right where they were at. Mm -hmm. And they would go over and, you know, they, they maybe shoot at them. So these things, if you put a rod through the top loop, two men can can rotate. Yeah, right, let's, move it just uh, a little bit more. Yeah. Um, to, yeah. Well, I'll well, excuse yeah, me. I'll there we go. Here. <laughs> so, so if you put a, talking about put a put a rod in the top one mm -hmm. and the two men can just twist that thing into the ground and where it's got the uh -huh. uh, screw like a yeah coil cor cork screw here. yeah and then just, it'd be quiet uh -huh. so that's and what you wanted to be doing kind of like yeah very very and then you, ingenious and then you can drop the bob wire into these loops without threading it through right so uh, and so I, don't, I was interested Sorry. in that um I didn't realize that we would fence off areas of land once we, okay. I guess, took it. Mm -hmm. So we would build a fence there. But yeah. I find that to be so interesting. Yeah, they would take uh, a little bit of land and then just put their fences up. And, and you said this is a sample of the barbed wire mm -hmm. that they would use. Uh, and you know what? Nobody's going to break through that barbed wire. No, I think it eventually, maybe World War II, we started going to the razor wire, a different type of wire. Okay, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah. The, so the exhibit has 10 tables, and each table is like a, its own standalone exhibit. So okay. this is about the trench. So we've got trench checkers, uh, the bob wire, wire cutters, this little game, the cootie game, mm -hmm. uh, and the trench shovel. Because I guess in World War One they would just be they would dig trenches and wait for someone to come up and they might be there for months they might be there for wow. months and that was that's wow. tough yeah for sure so i mean little games like that you know we we talk about the cost of having a military and a military presence somewhere mm -hmm. but there are all kinds of little things that we probably take for granted Right. And for these guys to have some way to pass time mm -hmm. uh, while they're stuck in a trench somewhere or whatever the case may be, you know. And there's also things that's known as trench art. So you, you've seen like uh, hobo art or oh, okay. that kind of different art pieces uh -huh. that people were doing. They have trench art. It's mostly made out of brass. So there you see vases and different things. And he has a collection of trench art from World War One here. And the museum and our permanent collection of our World War, World War One case, we have a piece of trench art that's really nice. It's the shape of, it's made with uh, hollow shells, okay. bullets, okay. and it's a, it's a cross and it's got a French emblem in the center. It's a beautiful piece. So it's like a brass casing mm -hmm. from a bullet. Yes. yes, And then they flatten it out and shape it yes. into things. Yeah, wow. it's called trench art. Because I mean, all kinds of, all kinds of men were fighting over there. Yes. Artists, teachers, athletes, yes, politicians. I mean, everyday I know, working man. I don't think the politicians ever got much into the <laughs> wars. They usually oh, I mean, in World them. War One, they might have. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, it, you know, I'm just saying that people have different ways of expressing themselves, yes. and they were all yes. in these trenches together. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's a that's awesome, awesome story. Yeah. Well, let's kind of move this way a little bit okay. and look at some of these well, other. Did you want to see? Yeah, this piece oh. right here. I saw that thing too. Man, it that is, thing is heavy. It is heavy. But when you pull this. Turn that around so you, they can see it. Can you see it now? Okay. Pull this pin. It drops down this. And ah. it's not going to ring because I got my hand on it. Uh -huh. But anytime a canister would be dropped into the trench, uh -huh. This would be a sound that you would know to, you had 30 seconds to grab your gas mask and get it on. Wow. Because they were dropping mustard gas into the trenches. My um, goodness. And mustard gas is, of course, deadly. Right. And still used today, uh, we use mustard gas today 
for chemotherapy. Interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I love when I go to an exhibit. I'm allergic. <laughs> right. Skin back in there somehow. I'll let you. I'm yeah. going to let her fool with that. I'm going to yeah, back off the camera just a little bit. Um, so if you look at this next exhibit, this is more of uh, kind of the uh, air assault, I yes. guess you'd say. Um, there wasn't a lot, but there were some. Right. Um, parts of World War One. you know, um, airplanes in battle, as you can see, these are all like biplanes and <laughs> There, it's not like they have um, places where they would carry bombs. You know, right. World War II became a bombing raid war. But in World War I, someone realized that when they were, because the airplanes were used mostly for reconnaissance. Uh -huh. And someone took a bomb with them on their recon uh -huh. mission and you just drop it. You know, and then oh, we can we can. Are these is World War One where I'm thinking of the Peanuts cartoon, but it was the Red Baron and Snoopy would fly the soft with camel. Yes. <laughs> and they so I think they had like might have been uh, air fight with with artillery. I think that's but, World War Two, but I'm not oh, sure. I think it's World War One. I. I think uh, that, that it part could be. is yeah. You could, you could be because the the pictures or the cartoon the, was the always a biplane. The biplane, mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, I, I, yeah, the because but the but U.S. Are, military did not even have an air force. No, and in I World War One, right? Mostly for reconnaissance. Yeah, where's the enemy? Yeah, and that's how they would lock title with that. Yeah, it's there, uh, it's yeah. Were you thinking? Oh, okay. There's an exhibit in the first part that tells you it was the it was the first war, it was the first war for aerial, uh, first war for tanks. Uh, that was the first time we had a blood bank. Was it was in oh, World War One? Wow. And it's just a lot of first, uh -huh. uh, which is kind of interesting to read about. Kind of interesting, kind of sad yeah. that yeah. we prepped and learned all these things in one big war, and then it kind of helped people continue to have those kind of wars. Right. You know, it's well, really. I, uh, uh, this exhibit here. Oh yeah, yeah. The Choctaw Co Talkers. There were Co Talkers in World War Two. But in World War One, they were just Choctaws. Mm -hmm. And probably most of them were from Oklahoma because that's where most of the Choctaws were at right, that time. Right. Uh, and in World War II, when they used not only Choctaws, a few Choctaws, they used uh, Navajo, mm -hmm. Comanche, mm -hmm. different tribes. As long as you had two men of the same tribe on both ends of the radio, uh, they had words a dictionary that they learned mm -hmm. when they first went in, uh, such as your native language for turtle is now the word for tank. Your native, uh, yeah, your okay. native uh, word for a bumblebee is bombers. So uh, as long as the same tribe was on both ends of the mm -hmm. radio, they could, different tribes could have done that. Well, and if, if the Germans ever kind of broke any part of the Choctaw code in World War I, that would have given them they didn't a use, little kind yeah. of an in on That's why World they didn't War II, use it. They, the Choctaws were mm -hmm. not, so, not so much in World War II. Mm -hmm. It's because they kind of already uh, infiltrated uh, into mm -hmm. the Choctaw language. Mm -hmm. but, but how much we appreciate the fact that our Native Americans were able to serve, because in 1918, uh, that would have been, I don't even know if they would have Which been considered citizens. American citizens I don't think yet at that point. Yeah. And so, for them to serve our country, uh, what a great sacrifice that was. was. And yeah, appreciate but, that so but much. But they were traditionally the they were they were fighters, right? I and mean, that was in their heritage. Right. That's so. true. That is true. Um, okay, so let's kind of move up here. I love this, the old bunting and everything mm -hmm. on this exhibit. This is uh this is really um just makes you feel like that I, I don't know, he just did such a great job collecting everything. He did. And then putting things together, it's quite interesting. On Monday, we had the high school uh, a class that um, Savannah Biles brought. The about, leadership about class. About 25, uh -huh. 30 kids. And so they first brought the tables in, put the screens in the back. And then we started just opening cases. And he would take an artifact uh, to him and he'd tell them what table it goes on. So mm. we're just piling stuff on these tables. And then when everybody left, then he put everything together like labels and all yeah that he did a great yeah. job yeah he knows so 
This is, you were speaking of the mustard gas earlier. Mm -hmm. So I guess this is the Saw year yeah. that they were given to, that allowed them to survive these gas attacks. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just, um, I mean, yeah. So you have French, German, so. British soldiers are wearing the gas mm -hmm. mask here, so they're a little bit different. Oh yeah, country. I see that, yeah. 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 I, everyone had, a, they were kind of a little bit different in, style but mm -hmm. wow i always thought that the big round eye things made them look kind of creepy but, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but i mean you know protective it was protective gear and then what is what is this donut girl do you know much about I this think, i don't because when i got to when keith got to this part when i was following him around learning all this stuff someone came and picked him so oh. i'm not familiar with a lot of well, stuff i need to hear I, this poster, it looks to me like the women who were mm -hmm. serving over there, you know, were primarily nurses, mm -hmm. I'm guessing, yes. um, in World War One. But it looks like the they made donuts and delivered them to troops. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what a what a way to have home away from home, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but. Uh, I'm sure there's information about that. And I, I think that that would be very interesting to yeah. look into some. So I might have to do a little yeah, deep dive back. on it. Yeah. And we have girl. videos that, that help too. There's two TVs that we run video continuously. Okay. And right. when, when uh, Keith is here, he has a, a program on his phone that's got Pandora on there. And he plays music through that speaker that you first saw when you came in uh -huh. of this time period. So that's kind of interesting oh. as well. So, oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, it looks like these are like, um, maybe donations that families made, of yes. a particular men who served. I think these two during portraits here are actually his ancestors. Oh, maybe this, maybe okay. So we have a Navy uniform mm -hmm. and then, uh, army, yes. army uniform. Yes. Uh, I mean, even like the helmet. The, it's the pith helmet style, but it's a heavy metal helmet. Uh, and I get, I guess this is just more army. I don't know, but you can see I kind of the transformation through the ages of um, military uniforms. You know, I mean, this picture, this makes me think of a Boy Scout mm -hmm. uniform. The, the style of the hat and everything and how everything has really right. changed. Um, also, see, look like how small these uniforms are. These men were not as big yes. as men are today. Right, just, just in, just in general, just, probably average. And they um, were, like most wars, very young. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, anyway. Right. It's an I, interesting exhibit. I mean, actually, my uh, father-in-law was in a submarine. Mm -hmm um during world war ii in the south pacific and i mean you know there was like a yeah a tiny a tiny guy he yeah. was he was uh, not a big man at all so and so then on around the corner now we're not going to show you guys everything because we think it's important for you to come here and see this exhibit for yourself yes but um right back here we have some interesting um artifacts i guess you'd say some um, things about the president during who was president during World War One, Woodrow Wilson, and um, some kind of a piece of money back Actually, here. What I is? I'm just barely caught. Keith telling the story, but Woodrow Wilson wanted his face on some currency, uh -huh. and there really wasn't anything left. You know, right. But, you know, Make up. Take Lincoln off. You know. <laughs> yeah. But. Uh, so they made, I think they only made 15 of these $100,000 bills. Oh, and okay. that, I'm sure that's print because the right. money is still actually uh, currency. But they only made 15 and they never, they never uh, put them into circulation. Exactly. Yes. They never put yeah. them into circulation. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, a letter, there's a letter written to King George V from a, a soldier from Chis Oh no, from King George to a soldier at Windsor, Windsor Castle. It was probably a British 
yeah, soldier yeah. serving at that time. Because, I mean, this was the First World War. Fought so, on three you know, continents. Yes, uh -huh. first, first war that was ever fought on three continents. Yeah, so this was the first time we had, like, the Allies. Exactly. And, yeah. and all of that. Um, exactly. And then this is just, I guess, more, there are, oh, this is a cool thing. I'm going to get this and show this to you. So this is a, um, like, Viewmaster. A Viewmaster. Remember? Where you want the yeah, where you click it down and it was on a, a circular thing. This is one. And we have these in the museum. And I have hundreds of these cards. Of these, really. And I'm not sure if I have any about World War One or not, uh -huh. but I have a lot from countries that don't exist anymore. And the one I show people when they come into the museum is um, Nagasaki, the temple at Nagasaki oh. that was, of course, bombed out in All World right. War Two. Right. But I have hundreds of these cards that look just like that. So, images. so this is really cool. And on the back is a fairly lengthy narrative mm -hmm. about whatever the subject is and the picture. So uh, really cool. And I'm guessing these are pictures of World War One. Yes. Here. Um, a bugle. And then this is uh, like a good examples of different kinds of posters. Advertisement, yeah. Um, things. Uh, I'm guessing, you know, uh, there were drives for all sorts of things, different kinds of mm -hmm. uh, food or, you know, and blood drives. assistance, well, blood drives, right. Um, I, did they have war bonds in World War One? I? I don't know. Or was that a I World War II thing? I know that was a World War II thing, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure they had it in World War One. Yeah, I think it is this that might have been when Uncle Sam came about, maybe was World War One. Yeah. Is that yeah, that's right. Because there's uh -huh. a there's a picture of him right there. This yeah. is a famous portrayal of Uncle Sam first appeared during World oh, War One. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, so a lot of like we were saying earlier, World War One set the stage for all of the fierce fighting wars that happened during the 20th century yes i guess yes, yes. and um you know uh what a i mean it's 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 great i guess in the advances in technology and all the things that people learned along the way but on the other hand people learn to be really mean to other people in right. uh, horrible ways yeah um but well it was also i think the first war i think it says on that poster that um propaganda Oh, Would yes, as well. Yes. So, in uh, fact, I was just listening to a podcast about propaganda <laughs> this week and uh, talking about that sort of thing from mm -hmm. the from the wars. Um, so this exhibit is uh, what what days and times are you open for this, Tova? Uh, tonight we'll stay open till seven. And okay. tomorrow we're one to five, Saturday we're one to five. Next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we're normally closed on Monday and Wednesday, but we'll stay open from 10 to 5. Oh, very Monday, good. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Very good. So, and then it will be gone after yes. that? Yes. yes. Okay. You want to, you want us to kind of walk that way? Okay. Um, Scott's going to give you guys just a little sneak peek of some of the rest of it. Um, we have this great camera collection here. This is so cool. Uh, a portable typewriter, a couple of those, binoculars, um, there's the more screen. uniforms. Now there's the screen with first in World War One. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, all of these first. Three continents, industrialized. Um, ah, the first. Chlorine and mustard gas, the first flamethrowers, mass airplanes, x-ray. I mean, wow. It was a, I guess it was a war of uh, innovation. Yes. And the In industrial reality. revolution had just happened. That, so. Yes. So we yes. Had, uh, so all of those kinds mm -hmm. of things, it was just on a roll. Yep. And it just carried right on into this war. But um, so guys, it sounds like you have a lot of opportunities to get here and to see this great uh, exhibit. Mm -hmm. And you know what, like, like Stefan, you don't live here in Oklahoma, but I bet this travels somewhere near you. It and does. there is a website uh, and I've got 
I've got that information. We'll put all of that. I've got it right over here, Scott. Um, we'll put all of the information that has the website. I'm guessing his itinerary of where he'll be. He, you know, the COVID has hurt him really bad. Uh -huh. He had all of these mm. exhibits set up to, to take, and then the COVID hit, and it was shutting down. Right. So um, I, I think it's starting to build back, uh -huh. but uh, we're happy to have it here, and I hope that it gets to go other places because it's right. a wonderful exhibit. Yes. Right, absolutely. I mean, she's ever, so ever since we got here a little while ago, it's just been a steady stream of visitors, people who want to come by and learn about mm -hmm. World War I. And I'm telling you, this exhibit, even though it's small, it is it is full. It's packed. Yes, yes there's is. so much good information here. So come in this weekend, come next week. It, it'll it just be here through Wednesday. Yes, we'll take it down on Thursday. Okay, so you it's guys good. have seven yep. days and they're only open six of them. So <laughs> <laughs> you better get here while you can. We'll put all the hours and days that it's going to be open and everything in our um, uh, comments there right. as well. But um, Kova, thank you so well, thank you. much. Thank you for coming over. Yeah. For this. Oh, it's, this uh, is uh, this is just a great exhibit. I think we'll have to come back another time and uh, see some more of the some, museum. Do some more of the yes. museum. Yeah, yes. that would be that'd be really fun. Uh, you got some good Wi-Fi going over here, so it makes it work well. <laughs> yes, we we just like got that. that, by the way. Too, yeah. So. All right. Well, we like that. Well, um, I guess that concludes the show for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure and tune in next week. We're going to have some fun things for you on Trail Talk. And um, you remember how we sign off? We say happy trails together? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Happy trails. Happy trails.